I'm an animal. I worked all my life for Cosa Nostra. I've killed more than 150 people. I can't even remember all their names. These were the words of the most notorious hitman of the Italian Mafia when he became an informant to the authorities. Are you wondering who I'm talking about? No other person could have committed such a massive crime in the history of the Italian Mafia than Giovanni Brusca. Brusca was born on the 29th of February, 1957. He was an Italian Mafia and a former member of the Corleonese clan of Sicilian Mafia. He was popularly known as the right-hand man of the dreadful boss of the bosses, Toto Rina. He was also popularly known by the nickname, The People's Slayer. That's a scary nickname to hear, isn't it? He must have murdered dozens of people over and over again to earn himself that dreadful nickname. Sure you don't want to miss out on any details about this ruthless hitman. Stick around till the end of the video as we'll be taking you through the criminal activities of Giovanni Brusca and his relationship with Toto Rina. Don't forget to click on the subscribe button and the notification bell for more interesting content before you continue watching. Brusca's Early Life There's a popular saying saying that a good father leaves an inheritance for his children. That wasn't the case of Giovanni Brusca. He inherited violence, brutality, and regular homicide. Brusca's membership as a mafia gang was an inheritance from the generations. His father, grandfather, and great-grandfather. Both his grandfather and great-grandfather were farmers before they got initiated into the Mafia gang. Giovanni Brusca's father Bernardo, who was also a patriarch of a local Mafia, served concurrently life sentences for several homicides. Bernard joined himself with the Corleonese group of Salvatore Rina, Leo Luca Bargerella, and Bernardo Provenzano. Immediately he replaced Antonio Salomone as Capo Madamento of San Giuseppe Giotto. He paved the way for his sons Emmanuel, the eldest, Giovanni, and Vincenzo, the youngest of them. Giovanni Brusca later became the head of San Giuseppe Giotto when Bernardo was imprisoned in 1985. Brusca, life of crime. Giovanni's emergence as the head of San Giuseppe Giotto gave him so much power to carry out his criminal activities. One of his famous homicides committed by Giovanni was the murder of the anti-mafia prosecutor Giovanni Falcone. He eliminated him by planting half a ton of explosives under a road he would be driving through. He detonated the bomb. Immediately, he saw Falcone's car drive over the explosives, killing everyone in the car, which included Falcone's wife and his three bodyguards. Just a few months after the murder of Giovanni Falcone, he also got both boss Vincenzo Melazzo and the businessman Ignacio Salvo. Santino Di Matteo became the first Falcone's assassin to become a government witness after his arrest on June 4, 1993. He exposed all the details of the assassination from the prison that tunneled beneath the motorway to the person in charge of 13 drums with TNT and Samtex, and the person who finally pressed the button for explosion. Of course, Di Matteo won't get away with his collaboration with the authorities to expose others. In retaliation to his cooperation with the authorities, he became an informant. His 11-year-old son was kidnapped November 23, 1993. It was revealed after investigation that kidnappers dressed like police officers to deceive the boy into taking him to see his father, who was then in the police custody for protection on the Italian mainland. Di Matteo desperately jumped on the next cab to Sicily in order to negotiate the release of his son. Unfortunately, on the 11th of January, 1996, after 779, the boy had become very ill due to maltreatment. He was finally strangled till death. His body dissolved in a barrel of acid at the order of Giovanni Brusca. Brusca never stops raining terror upon the community and anyone that seems to come his way. He also was involved in the 1993 campaign of terror against the state due to their crackdown against the Mafia after the murder of Giovanni Falcone and Paolo Borsellino. A series of bombs orchestrated by Brusca also took place after the arrest of Toto Rina. Brusca was finally captured. Brusca's enjoyment finally turned to a nightmare as police bumped into his house while he was dining with his girlfriend, their young son, his brother Vicenzo, and his sister-in-law and their two children. Police were able to locate his exact location through his phone call when they heard a noise of a plainclothes officer's motorbike which interrupted. At the site of Brusca and the police station 90 minutes after the arrest, dozens of police officers cheered with joy, honked their horns, and embraced one another. Some even ripped off their mask. 
With so much conviction, they have nothing to fear anymore. One of the police officers punched Bruska in the face with excitement. The courtroom was filled with pandemonium in 1997 as Bruska and DiMatteo met face to face during court proceedings. DiMatteo probably remembered how they gruesomely murdered his innocent son. He immediately burst into tears and told the judge, I guarantee my cooperation, but to this guy I guarantee nothing. If you leave me alone with him for two minutes, I'll cut off his head. The court securities intervened when the confrontation threatened to become violent. Di Matteo was restrained by the security guards. Though Brusca had asked Di Matteo's family for forgiveness, they just can't forget how their innocent son was so brutally killed. Brusca was sentenced to 26 years in prison for the bombing that killed the anti-mafia magistrate Giovanni Falcone. He confessed to be responsible for detonating the bomb planted beneath the motorway along the airport with a remote control while watching the convoy of the magistrate pass through it. Brusca was sentenced to another life imprisonment in 2009 for the elimination of Salvatore Carava. Brusca's collaboration with the Italian justice. Fear gripped Brusca as he was afraid of facing the harsh prison term reserved for high-ranking mafia bosses. He felt his repentance would be a rice to escape the harsh prison term. He started collaborating with the police. However, all what Brusca said in the first three months was either unverifiable or false. This called for a tightening of the collaboration system by the politicians. Brusca's controversial version of Toto Rina's capture was a secret deal among secret agents, Carabinieri officers, and Cosa Nostra bosses who were tired of Rina's dictatorship. Brusca made it known that Bernardo Provenzano actually sold Rina in exchange for some valuable compromising materials that Rina kept in his apartment. Rina was eventually imprisoned in Rebibia, Rome. In 2002, he requested house arrest nine times, which has been refused all through. But in 2004, he was granted release for one week after every 45 days to see his family. This was a reward for his good behavior and his cooperation with the authorities for being their informant. His cooperation also led to his sentence reduced to 26 years in prison. While in prison, Bruska's properties were confiscated. His family land was handed over to an organization called the Consortium for Legal Development. His small stone farmhouse in San Giuseppe Giotto, just 40 minutes from Palermo, was taken over and renovated by the government. The farm now attracts tourists to enjoy organic pasta milled from wheat grown on Brusca's land. The Release of Brusca After 25 years in prison, the people's slayer, Giovanni Brusca, was finally released the 31st of May, 2021. His release sparked a row in Italy and also caused lots of distress among relatives of the victim of Cosa Nostra. Politicians also stated that Brusca has never shown any real evidence of repentance from his atrocities. Amid several backlash from the public concerning his release, Politicians Matteo Salvini of the Legal Nord and Enrico Letta of the Democratic Party were also shocked and critically reacted to his release. According to both of them, Brusca's freedom after 25 years in prison was not the justice that the Italian deserved. Tina Montanero, the wife of one of the bodyguards killed, told the Republica that she was indignant at Brusca's release. In her words, the state is against us. After 29 years, we still don't know the truth about the massacre. Giovanni Brusca, man who destroyed my family, is free. Maria Falcone, the sister of Giovanni Falcone, also told ANSA, On a human level, this is news that pains me, but the law on the reduction of sentences for the collaboration of mafiosi is a law my brother wanted, and therefore, it must be respected. I only hope the judiciary and the police will be vigilant with extreme attention in order to avert the risk that he commits crime again. However, Brusca's cooperation with the police to reveal several strong secrets led to the arrest of many other notorious Cosa Nostra bosses, but the public, especially the relatives of his victims, find it very difficult to forgive him. Luciano Trena told the Republica, I will never forget the look on his face when we arrested him. I will never forgive him, because I do not believe Brusca has ever told the whole truth. Trena was among the police officers that arrested him in the province of Agrigento in 1996. He's the brother of a fellow officer who was also killed by Cosa Nostra. Sure, you feel like hearing more, but we have to stop here today. We'll surely give you more hot and compelling content in our next video. Don't forget to click on the subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss out on the next riveting contents. Thanks for watching.